God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon on this Reformation Sunday uh, comes from our second reading, our epistle reading from Romans chapter 3. It's the very first verse. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. So today we hear that verse, we rejoice that the law of God silences us, that before God we have no excuse, we have nothing to say before God that can cover our sins. But it is Christ Jesus who goes before the Father. He is held accountable for your sins, for the whole sins of the world. That yes, indeed, the whole world is held accountable to God in Christ Jesus. So that now our tongues are loosed, our lips are freed, our mouths are opened now to speak of the joy that it is to be God's people to celebrate even a Reformation Sunday, that this gospel that Luther brought forward, we pray it still is brought forward with us. That we have the same boldness, the same clarity as Luther had. And I especially think about that this last week in this political season. I love singing this hymn, A Mighty Fortress, during the political season. Because as we're thinking about who's going to be elected, we are reminded in the second stanza on page three, whom God himself for us fights, the valiant one whom God himself elected. Who is the one that God chooses? Well, in Christ Jesus, God chooses us. He elects his son, Jesus so that he may choose us. So remember that this week, as the gods of our civic religion are placed before us, choose this guy, choose that girl. The non-stop text messages, I don't know if you get them like I do, it just brings me so much joy to slide it over, say delete and report as junk. I don't think it does anything, but it it feels good. The endless commercials, the radio ads, all of these politicians promising us heaven on earth if we would do one thing. It's up to you. If you would but do one thing and vote for me. Politicians are never silent. As much as we would like them to be, they always have something to say. But that's not the only voice that is always speaking. The Reformation is a celebration that God is not silent. God speaks. And in our second reading today, it's worthy of our consideration and celebration on this Reformation Sunday to recognize that God's law is not silent. The law of God, as St. Paul says today, speaks to everyone. In the Reformation, we celebrate that, yes, God's law still speaks. God's law still teaches. God's law still takes away all of our righteousness. And it guides us to where God's voice and promise speaks forever. That in Christ Jesus, God speaks to you. That in Christ Jesus, God has declared us, he's judged us righteous. And this is a declaration, a word that goes into all eternity. You are forgiven. But when someone does go silent, after the polls have all closed, after the races have all been called, it does seem kind of quiet. Oftentimes, though, when someone is quiet with us, when when someone gives us the silent treatment, It's when they're not happy. It's when they're trying to tell us something. Kids, when they're upset with their parents, they give them the silent treatment. Wives won't speak to their husbands. Husbands won't speak to their wives. The friend who regularly called now won't return 
any phone call. When someone is silent, it means they're not happy. In our Romans reading today, we hear that the law of God speaks to everyone, not in text messages, not in commercials or robot phone calls. But St. Paul says the law of God speaks in your heart. St. Paul says it this way, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. The law of God speaks to everyone. Doesn't matter what political side of the spectrum you're on. Doesn't matter what country you are a citizen of. God is not silent. Many people today, they say, I wish I could hear God speak to me. They assume that if God were to speak, he would have something good to say, that he would agree with all your wonderful, great ideas. Or maybe, perhaps God would give you the winning lottery numbers or a guarantee that nothing in life will ever go wrong. St. Paul says that God does speak if you're willing to hear it. Let he who has ears hear God does have something good to say, that is true, but first, St. Paul says he speaks to what makes us so silent to him so often. First, God speaks a word as to why it's so easy for us to grow cold in our prayers. First, God speaks a word to us why it seems we don't have to try and ignore the Bible. So often we have to try and study the scriptures. So first, God's law speaks. And thanks be to God that he is not silent. He is that nagging voice that you hear after you lose your patience with someone. He who is slow to anger has great understanding, the Proverbs say. But he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. Yes, even in traffic, when no one on Highway 75 knows how to drive properly except you. How ironic it is. The law speaks when you think you can blame others for your anger when you try to justify or excuse your anger because, well, they did this to me. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love is not easily angered. Yes, even after the 20th political conversation you've had with your uncle who insists he is on the right side of politics. Even when you repeatedly hear lies from your local politician. Love is not easily angered. The law is that voice that leaves you no place to hide from the reality that you sin because there is a little part of you that loves sin more than changing your life. There is a part of you that would rather not grow in righteousness. There is a part of you that would rather not grow in the disciplines of the faith and is fine to sit in the muck and the mire of sin. At the time of the Reformation, the church taught that you could silence that voice of God's law by doing good works or by purchasing an indulgence. People paid large sums of money to silence that voice of God that was nagging them. 500 years later, as we celebrate the Reformation, maybe we laugh at them for thinking they could, that that money could help them with their sin and eternal salvation. But would we take sin as serious as them? That we would be willing 
to pay large sums of money? Would you take sin and hell so seriously that you would be willing to sacrifice your 401k and all your stock investments? That's what people were doing. Just a week earlier here in church, we heard the reading of the rich young man who Jesus told to sell all that he had. Is it not a temptation for us to think that the law of God has been silenced? That Jesus was not serious when he said, I have not come to abolish the law. Is our temptation now, 500 years after the Reformation, to not take sin seriously? That we've maybe fallen off the horse like a drunk peasant, you know, going to one side and then try to correct, and we, in some ways, fall on the other side. Even as our reading from Revelation today, it says, fear God, and look at, look at what the angel said, that, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Give God glory because there is that nagging voice, his judgment. Give God glory because the law still speaks. The law of God is good and wise. It silences our attempts at self-justification. Just like you don't want a doctor who's silent when it comes to diagnosing your illness. So too, how beautiful it is that we have a God who is not silent, but shows us our sin through the law comes knowledge of sin, St. Paul says in our reading, so that we would not be complacent spiritually, so that we would not be comfortable with that part of us that still likes to sin. Because our works righteousness, it may not be so open as it was at the time of the Reformation. Our self-righteousness may not be so open that we have a name for it like an indulgence. But we suffer from the same attempts to self-justify. To silence the law of God in so many ways besides the gospel. To silence the law of God by blaming others. To silence the law of God by not knowing our Bible well enough. By trying to shut up the word of God by keeping our Bibles closed. We try to silence the law by letting our life of prayer grow cold because that assumes we don't need God's help. We try to silence the law of God nowadays with things that won't cost us money. A cheap indulgence. But just because you can't silence the law by money or actions or good works doesn't mean the law hasn't been dealt with. It's just we're so prideful we think we can silence the law. But Jesus is more faithful than you are. We know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. Christ Jesus comes alongside of us when he's born in the flesh. Jesus is born under the law. Jesus, who was perfect, God in the flesh, born a true man so that he could stand right next to you under this condemning law. But then that begs the question, Could the law silence Jesus? Did the law shut the mouth of Jesus? No, it did not. For what did Jesus say on the cross? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The law could not silence Jesus. He's the only one who can claim innocence. The law could not accuse him, and yet... He comes to be accountable to the law for your sake. He takes the fall for your sins. And he goes to the cross silent like a lamb before the shearers. 
The law could not accuse him, yet he who knew no sin became our sin, that we would be the righteousness of God. That is God's last word. Yes, the law still is spoken to us, but all the more the last word of God is when he raised his son Jesus from the dead and declared the whole world innocent. The law speaks. The law speaks so that the world may be held accountable to God. Jesus came as your substitute. He is held accountable for the sins of the world. Your sins, even those sins you've enjoyed, even that revenge that tasted so sweet. Jesus was accused of that. The law spoke, accused Jesus of being the worst sinner of the world, and Jesus said, yes, I am accountable for the sins of the world. And so he died. The wages of sin is death. Jesus took your sin so seriously. Not only was he willing to give up his wealth as the very son of God from all eternity. Not only was he willing to give up everything, but he also gave his life. He died for you to live. He gave his very life everything he possessed. Not to get revenge on you, but to declare you righteous. To give you his inheritance in the waters of baptism. A new life. A wealth of riches and mercy that, compare, that nothing compares to. The law indeed has been answered. So that now we rejoice in the law. That when the scriptures say to be patient, we say yes. We can now confess our sins freely so that God may speak and silence that voice. With his Holy Spirit, he now guides you to be willing to sacrifice not just your money, but everything for the Lord. To not let anger consume you. For you are not a prisoner of your sins. You are not a prisoner of your sinful flesh. For if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. The Lord has set you free that instead of repaying evil with evil, instead of seeking revenge, we repay evil with good. Jesus was crucified so that the last word of God is Him speaking you righteous. Him declaring you forgiveness. For now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Though the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the law still teaches us. The law of God has not changed, but the Holy Spirit has changed you. That the law of God now is not our enemy, but our guide, our friend, guiding us along the way to see Jesus. The law and the prophets bear witness to Christ Jesus. So this Reformation Sunday... We celebrate that, yes, God does speak to us. He speaks to us in His law, but He also speaks to us in absolution. In baptism, in the Lord's Supper, God communes with us through the very body and blood of Jesus, freeing us by faith. No longer is the question, how are we justified before God? But now, as justified people, how do we live as set free? How do we spread this good news that God is not silent? How do we witness, not just with political signs in our yard and the little sticker that says, I voted, but how do we show that we do not put our trust in princes, but in the God who still speaks? The God who even after all the politicians have died, his word endures forever. God has been patient with you. God is not angry with you. God does not seek revenge with us. God doesn't excuse your sins, but takes them away. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. 
For God in Christ Jesus has chosen you, and he is not silent about it. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.